Many dream of starting a business and building an empire. But for most, the pitfalls of funding remain a stumbling block. We searched for startup businesses from all over Southeast Asia. These 24 startups have risen above hundreds of hopefuls, earning their spot on the big spa. Singapore has acquired a reputation for being the high-tech hothouse for budding businesses. Events like the Singapore FinTech Festival, the flagship platform of government not-for-profit organisation Elevandi, in partnership with the Thai Global Summit 2023, is the largest in the world, attracting over 66,000 participants representing 150 nations. It's an ideal setting to kickstart the journey of our rigorously auditioned final 24 startups from all over Southeast Asia. Big spark, let's go. Hi, Bruno. Yes! All right. Our hopeful startups are here for one reason to pitch for a share of seed funding worth up to $1 million. Optionally, funds can be paid in USDC, a US dollar equivalent issued by Circle, which arrives in wallets within seconds. The future of their companies could be determined by these eight venture capitalists. Niraj Tiagi. I'm hoping to see a lot of AI, fintech and consumer product startups on the big spot. John Sharp. Visa Kanan. UC Salovara. Vanessa Ho. Murali Ravi. Anuj Golecha. And Sebastian Togalam. I'm hoping to see strong and innovative founders that are able to solve a big problem and able to scale that business in the larger market. Hi, judges. Hi. Impressing them will be no easy feat. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Your time starts now. And eminent industry experts will assess the business aided by our two resident judges, Roshni Matani Chong. Multiple ups and downs have shaped my startup journey. And that's why I have a never-say-die attitude. Lim Wai Man. My best piece of advice for startups is to know your purpose before you commit. We aim to help revolutionise textile waste. Our solution is a non-toxic alternative to disinfectants. We allow anyone to invest into high-yielding Indonesian property from just one dollar. Very impressive. We have come up with... Uh, sorry. Apply psycho psychologies. Uh, so it's a hard no for me. Which of these 24 startups will get that financial boost for their business? I'm your host, Diana Sir, and this is The Big Spark. I have to say I'm quite happy to see the diversity. At the beginning, I thought I may be the oldest contestant. I'm looking at it as an opportunity, even though, yes, all of it is very, very daunting. Good morning, startups. Welcome to the Big Spark. I'm your host, Diana Sir, and these here are your resident judges. Hi everyone, my name is Roshni Matani Cheong, the CEO and founder of The Parent Inc. My name is Lim Waiman, I'm the founder and CEO of Doctor Anywhere. By the way, Waiman has just won the Thai KPMG Southeast Asia Entrepreneur of the Year 2023. Congratulations! The judges are very inspiring, definitely a lot to learn from them. You have all made it here after a stringent selection process. But there's going to be plenty of hurdles to overcome before you can get what you came here for. Funding for your business. All 24 startups will go through stage one, the quick pitch. But only 15 startups will proceed to stage two, the in-depth pitch. This is where your business plans and your financials will come under intense scrutiny. There will be another round of elimination at Stage 2, leaving only a handful of you to move on to 
the final stage. This is where you will be pitching to eight venture capitalists for a share of that one million dollars. Our resident judges will serve as mentors to you and they will guide you through the process. The next few weeks are going to be very, very intense learning for all of you. Make full use of this opportunity. We will kick off with a quick pitch today. May the best pitches be duly rewarded. This is the real thing. I'm actually here. I'm definitely ready to showcase the best side of my company. My name is Dr. Vignesh Krishnan Kuti. I'm born and raised in Singapore, and my company is Salivate Technologies. As a teenager, I was trying to understand what life is about. It dawned on me that every living entity has a right to survive. So as a silent protest, I just avoided animal products. But now, using science and technology, I can actually make a difference. We really need to scale up. But biotech is extremely expensive. Due to the scarcity in funding, a lot of my team are also suffering, but they are still sticking with me because they know that the returns are enormous. I think these are the best so far. My wife has been at home taking care of my four and a half month old daughter, and that gives me the confidence to do what I do. Celebrate. Okay. The Big Spark is an amazing opportunity. The funding is attractive to me, which is why I'm here. Are you just a little bit nervous? I'm a little bit more than a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. 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 We have our guest judge for today, Mr. Amit Gupta. Hello. Hello. Amit is the president of Thai. He's also on the global board of trustees for Thai. And he's also the CEO and founder of Ecosystems. Thai is the world's largest community of entrepreneurs and investors. It's a non-profit that's come together to foster entrepreneurship and give back to the startup ecosystem. We've gone through your deck and we would love for you to pitch to us. A yes from any one of us means a short list for deliberation for you. You have two minutes to convince us to put you through. Your time starts now. Our goal at Salivate is to enable the reduction of animal husbandry. That is the raising and the slaughter of animals for our needs. Fundamentally, animals are made of cells. So it is possible to use these cells to replace a lot of the products that would otherwise come from animals. We have a platform of novel technologies and products that allow our clients to scale up the use of cells, to do this at a lower cost and without going back to animal slaughter of any kind. These are already in the market today, stem cell-based skincare products. They use Salivate for their production. This here is a piece of leather from a real crocodile. We have a client in the leather space that are using Salivate to replicate leathers like this using Salivate's technologies. And we are also working with numerous cultivated meat companies to use cells to create meat. But we need to expand our production because we are not able to meet the demands of our customers. As such, we are here today to raise $350,000 for 2.5% of our company, really to scale up our production and to meet new customers. Thank you. Where do you conduct the research and how would $350,000 be sufficient to actually cover that? At the moment, we do our research at the National University of Singapore. Uh, we got an offer from one of the Masik subsidiary called Nurasa. They have made us a very good offer to use the laboratory space at a discounted rate, and that is sufficient for us to do a lot of the R&D. And what's your burn at the moment, monthly burn? So at the moment, our burn is about 35,000. And you're raising 350. That's giving you 10 months. For a business that's so heavy on research, I actually think that... It's not enough, yeah. So I think you should reevaluate that. How much revenue are you making right now? Uh, so at the moment, our revenue is less than 20000 at the moment. That's why we need to scale up. I do think that you do need to bring in a strong commercial leader into your team, a good finance person as well. If you have those two sorted out, I think you can really achieve a lot with what you're doing. 
it might be a better idea for you to focus on one to two industries and not just spread yourself too thin because do not underestimate the nuances in each individual industry. Dr Vignesh, across the board, we're quite impressed with you and we'd like to take you into the next deliberation cycle. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Congratulations! Thank you so much. I'm happy for you. I got shortlisted, but I'm not exactly sure if I will be so among the top 15. The judges case. looked very interested in what I was doing. Personally, I think that is a good sign. I definitely can guarantee that the judges will not regret if they choose me, because what Salivate is trying to build can actually change the world. I think most startups founders are often too obsessed with their technology, losing sight of the customer and the actual problems they are solving. They fall in love with their innovation, but not with the problems the innovation um, solves. They become obsessed with their idea and they don't think enough about the execution. They don't really focus on the problem that they're trying to solve and the customer and really have a true grasp of how it impacts the customer. Quite often, uh, startups get crippled by choosing perfection over speed. So it's very important to get a prototype out. Do some market research if your consumers, your targeted audience, would genuinely welcome and pay for your service. One of the things that they have to look at, besides their business plan, besides improving on their products, is also cash flow. Investors spend their day jobs looking at business plans, looking at pitch decks. So it's really important that a founder captures their attention as quickly as possible. It's Quick Pitch Day on The Big Spark. Startups are competing for a coveted spot on the short list. Would you like to try some low GI cookies? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Sure. I'm Sean, the CEO of Nutrien Private Limited, and I'm from Singapore. I have two young kids and I do want to see them eat healthier. So we created this proprietary blend that substitutes sugar across categories of food and beverage. Papa, you know I like your brownie. I believe this will give us an edge over our competitors. I hope so too. Finally, I can get my salary. <laughs> <laughs> if you can do good for society and earn money, I think it's the best of both worlds. All the best! Good luck! Smile more! I would like to take Neutron onto a global stage where more people around the world can actually enjoy better for you food that's driven by taste, trusted by nutritionists, and backed by science. Neutron, we're ready for you. There's one million dollars of funding up for grabs, and I want all of it. We all know the global struggles with diabetes. We have half a billion people living worldwide with this illness. One million Singaporeans if nothing is done by 2050. Healthcare expenditure is going to increase from one billion to 2.5 billion. With that, we have created our proprietary blend of powder in collaboration with ASTAR. This powder is super versatile because it can be used across multiple categories of products. Best of all, it is cost-effective and it does not alter the taste of any recipe. Market size is huge. 46 billion globally, 8.7% Kager. Nutrients covers 80% of that market. One of our business strategy is to actually co-create brands with our partners and we have three commercial products that we are selling offline and online. And I would like to serve them to you to try. Thank you. Our partners have shared the performance of low GI products have surpassed the performance of its original variant. And with that, we are seeking a $1.5 million investment to fuel our next phase of expansion. Financial projections are healthy. 76% Kager growth rate, break even in year two, more than 50% gross margin. Food is the new medicine. Thank you very much. I liked it. Yeah, I just had a cookie. I was feeling guilty, <laughs> but now I can eat this guilt-free. So what is your proprietary mode here? Our proprietary blend is actually a trade secret. I see, and you have patents around this. We do not have any patents around this, so we do intend to trademark the brand. The fact that you don't actually have patents is definitely a concern to me. 
Because this is the food business and you're trying to do something that's an alternative, this is definitely the kind of business that needs to have patents. I love the product, the presentation, but I'm not convinced yet about the research component and what's behind it. So it's a no for me, sorry. Thank you. I do think that you have strengths when it comes to marketing. I'm not sure whether the product is that differentiated versus anyone else. So because of that, it's a no for me as well. Got it. As a consumer, I do not taste the difference. And that then leads to where is the moat? How do we differentiate from other competitors? So for me, that is a no as well. Thank you. Thank you very much Thank you, for Sean. the Thank you. I felt a bit disappointed that it was a no. The judges believe that without a patent, the defensibility is actually very low. But what I strongly believe in being able to commercialise this product and hitting the markets is definitely more important than that patent. You do understand that with a no, it means that your journey on the big spark has come to an end. Right. Every pitch is nerve-wracking. You get yeses, you get noes. All the best. Thank you. It's just like trying to get a girlfriend. When you finally find the right one, you marry her. The journey has been fruitful, getting to meet people from different industries, and it was a great experience. And in case you haven't figured it out, we're sisters. We're brothers as well. Oh. Awesome. There it is. Sibling love. Right. Sibling love, not sibling rivalry, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm Rosali Gitao from Thailand. I'm Vil Gitao from the Philippines. And, and we're, we're from Vixie. Vixie is an award-winning app to ignite the world's largest untapped market, women, to mm -hmm. invest. It really started with our mom. We are Filipino Kenyans. Our mother was a migrant worker from the Philippines and she had cancer. It was actually thanks to one investment decision, namely life insurance, that we were able to pay for our education and have a life. Without this money, it would have been very difficult. Money is power, and the fastest way to grow is through investments. We want to see women really starting to own their finances, and that's why I want Bixie in the pockets of every single woman. Bixie, Bixie. Oh, that's us. You're up next. This is it. it. Today, we are on the Big Spark because she's single, gentlemen. <laughs> and she's ready to mingle. I'm shaking. But in addition to finding my sister an eligible bachelor, we're here to gain some investors and we're here to win. Our big spark is Bixie, an award-winning app to ignite the world's largest untapped market in finance to invest. Today, we're asking for half a million sing for 10% of our company. So this is my Bixie. She's the female feng shui symbol for wealth distribution. And our plan is to put her in the pocket of every woman in the world in the form of an app. And for us, this isn't just a job, this is really personal. Um, our mother was a migrant worker from the Philippines, and it was thanks to one investment decision that she made that transformed our lives from orphans to executives. I was able to work at top law firms in New York and Paris, and hold senior roles at the United Nations and Alibaba, where I learned how to take small amounts of money from large groups of people and turn that into more money for the individual. But 99% of women are not so lucky. You see, women are the largest untapped market in finance. We are worth three trillion dollars, because fewer than one percent of us invest. Well, the solution we created at Big C is an AI-powered app that connects women with knowledge, network, and tools to invest, tailored with the unique way that women look at money. Our users test their money mindset. We tailor a plan for them to gain knowledge and confidence, and we uh, provide them with content, community, and, uh, and um, other products to nudge them to invest. At the background, we gather data to create female-focused financial products and capture this $3 tri trillion market. And we've made tremendous progress in our first year launching in the Philippines, acquiring over 10,000 organic users. We have 25 B2B partners that we're already generating revenue from, and we've been recognized as, and we've raised half a million. <laughs> Happy to answer any questions. I didn't quite grasp, you know, what the business model is. Like, what do you monetize with the app? We make our money by selling our app platform as a white label to our B2B clients. We make money from subscriptions. We have a tiered pricing model depending on how many users they want to bring in because for us, it's also a twofer. We acquire their users at zero acquisition costs and we also get a payment per head. 
Is there a need for you to localize it when you go to different countries? Our content always has to be localized. We thought there was going to be this world of content and others that we could borrow from. There just isn't. That's going to be a bit of a challenge for us. How are we going to gain a breadth of localized content? I think if you'd shown us the product, the actual app, we would have got a much better sense of what it can do. I do think that you can be a lot clearer in terms of how you localize a product in different countries, especially across Southeast Asia. But overall, you have done well. I can sense that you know why you exist, and that's very important for us. I think it's amazing what you're doing. Financial literacy for women is something that is a clear need. So for that, we love for you to be shortlisted for the next round. Yay! Thank you. She brought us luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Is it no even allowed? Are good. you leaving the luck behind for us? <laughs> we're gonna take her with us. We were gonna get this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, see Bye. You. Thanks. We've been shortlisted. Woo! Oh my god, I'm shaking. I'm not gonna lie, it was slightly intimidating, but we got all of our key points across. I think we have some stiff competition around here but we did the best we could with the time that we had, and that's all that we could have asked for. What are the key areas that startups should focus on when seeking funding in the current financial climate? I've got some insights from Sopnendu Mohanty, Chairman of Elevandi and Chief FinTech Officer at the Monetary Authority of Singapore. 2024, one of the key trends in the investment capital landscape. We are entering to a phase where technology demand is at an unprecedented scale and we need to find solutions to solve it. I'm absolutely sure funding will come through in a big way. What sectors are going to be up there at the front? Finance, health sector, and in my view, anything solving an old age problem will attract a lot of good capital. Let's talk now about Big Spark. Yes. We have 24 hopefuls. What is your message to them? They should clearly articulate what problem they're solving for. And they should not be looking for short-term plans so they can get investors' money and sell it to somebody else. I am looking for hopefuls who are committed for a long-term journey in this process. Well, great tips coming from you, Saab. Thank you very, very much. Thanks for having me. Best of luck. Yes, there is funding available to startups. All VCs in Southeast Asia are right now open for business. There is so much money available to startups, especially in Singapore. I think there's so much concentration of venture funds and family offices right here. There are more angel investors, there's more high net worth guys investing than ever before. So even when VCs may be pulling back a little bit, um, there's still a lot of people out there investing. The environment is normalized compared to the past few years of hyper supply of money, but there is money. While we've had a bit of a slowdown in later stage funding, Early stage funding is still quite active. There are a lot of money available for startups. It's just I think their decision making is slightly longer. The investors right now are getting way more cautious and very calculative what they invest in. Of course, there's a lot of money available for startups, but the emphasis is on sustainable innovation. Don't lose your sight on profitability. Startup hopefuls from all over Southeast Asia are pitching for a share of seed funding worth up to $1 million. A yes from any judge would mean a spot on the shortlist. 15 startups will then be selected to go to the second round, the in-depth pitch. We are a mental health startup called Talk Your Heart Out. Oh, mental health. It's actually the same like Ooh. we do. Oh, We're wow. in the same space, actually. Oh. Yeah. Okay, such an important space. Yes. I'm Shilpa. I'm Chirag. I'm Narmi. And we are Talk Your Heart Out from Singapore. I'm Shilpa's husband. When Shilpa started Talk Your Heart Out, the decision to join her was quite an easy one. Talk Your Heart Out is an online platform based in Singapore and Malaysia currently. We make it easy for anyone to get access to quality therapy in an affordable way. I had experienced burnout in Australia working as a corporate lawyer, after which I went for therapy and experienced the life-changing power of therapy for myself. When we returned to Singapore in 2019, we thought that there was a gap in the market for people like myself who had experienced mental health issues. Narmi knew someone who had used Talk Your Heart Out services and benefited from them. 
So he was very intrigued to see how he could help us bring Tokyo Hara to the next level. We are very proud of the platform that we have built. To see people actually giving us comments about what we're doing, that just makes you want to just go on. We are here at the big spot to raise funds. We've reached the stage where we're ready to scale and that's where we need help. Welcome you guys. Hello, how are you? Talk your heart out. Yes. Who is talking this time? Uh, I'll be doing the two-minute pitch and uh, hopefully we'll all take some questions. Okay, excited to go, Nami? Yeah, definitely. Whatever happens, happens, so we're just here for the ride. <laughs> You've got two minutes. All right. <laughs> Talk Your Heart Out is an online platform that makes it easy for anyone to access quality therapy from an accredited professional. We also provide services to businesses, including workshops, webinars, and group therapy. After three years of building Talk Your Heart Out, the key insights that we have gleaned are as follows. Uh, number one, therapy is not just for anxiety and depression. In fact, over 50% of our clients come to us for self-development. Uh, number two, AI and ML can augment the core service offering of therapy by professionals. And number three, therapy is evidence-based and it is rooted in science. So we intend to incorporate all of these learnings into our product roadmap and with the aim of making Taiho as the go-to place for all things mental health. We are currently raising $1.2 million at a $6 million pre-money valuation to allow us to achieve $3 million in annual revenue 15 months post-funding. BetterHelp uh, is a US-based online therapy platform that last year alone served more than one million clients. Our ambition is to become the BetterHelp of Asia Pacific. Thank you very much for your time. How many users do you have at the moment? We have over 3,500 users uh, on the platform and we do both B2B and uh, B2C. And they're Paying users? Yes. And monthly subscriptions? No, so we are currently a pay-as-you-use service, okay. but there are plans to develop subscription-based self-improvement programs that will introduce uh, alongside the, the therapy services that we provide. So they pay for a therapist effectively. And yes. what is the sort of average ticket size per transaction? In Singapore, our average cost per session is about $140. And from that, our take rates is about 35%. So 35% is your margin? Yes. How do you maintain your margins, given that there are similar startups emerging, especially those leveraging on AI? Yep. We actually believe AI misses two critical elements in therapy, right? One is empathy and the human interaction. But we think there's a real use case for AI in therapy. But that's not to replace the therapist itself, but it's to augment the service offering. So we have some plans to apply AI in other parts to kind of help the therapist deliver better sessions. When did you start the company? 2020, during the pandemic. In three years, you only have 3,500 paying users. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's quite small scale for something that you've done for the last three years. And then I also question whether you will have churn rate of your psychologist, like typical marketplaces. So unfortunately for me, it's a no. I see your business at the moment more as uh, a marketplace where you're bringing the service provider to the customer. And I wonder what the barrier to entry is there. Mm. I just don't feel that the revenue is predictable enough to drive that level of VC interest. I love your background and I think I would love to support this. But unfortunately for me, it's a no. One of the biggest issues is that we actually do not have enough psychologists until we find a way to utilize tech. It's very hard to scale the business. So for me, I'm saying a no. I'm so sorry. You guys will not be proceeding to the short this round. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for sure. Thanks. Yeah. Whatever feedback they give, it's fair. It's just for us now to take it and move forward with what they've said. The judges wanted to see how we would better use tech as part of our platform. I'm supposed to be the tech guy, and this falls on me a lot. This should have been addressed. So I feel that the judges didn't have an opportunity to see that. Convince yourself. We can do it. 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 I'm Salma. I'm Andre. We are from Indonesia and we are from Tenang AI.
which is an AI mental health companion designed for Gen Z to help them with low to medium daily stress. I've been a psychologist for the last five years and I was also a university lecturer, so I work closely with Gen Z. Many of my clients and students come to me because they have mental health problems. My turning point was when my father passed away around 2018. It was the hardest year of my life. I knew that mental health is really much needed and I also experienced the hardest you know, uh, part to actually seek help and there's not much help available in Indonesia. That's why I think somehow something needs to be in place. Very, very excited to be here just because it's not just Indonesia, it's global exposure. Hi, judges. So I think this is a time to show the judges that Tenang is something that they're looking for. We designed Tenang as a prevention as a service because of the fact that 70% of Gen Z and millennials have a low to medium daily stress, but they find it really difficult to seek help because of the stigma around mental health is not available at night and the cost still very expensive. But with Tenang, we can reduce the cost by up to 80%, making it accessible 24-7. Since we launched in March 2023, we already serve 25,000 Genzis and millennials all around Indonesia. And you know what? 50% of them are employees. With target addressable market, 15 billion US dollar, it's a huge market. And another good news is that 90% of our users actually felt better and happier after chatting with our AI because it can give empathetic responses, human-like interactions, in daily language of Indonesian and English, also psychological approach. We have the best team with the global advisors. That's why to actually scale and improve, we're seeking for 1 million for 15% of shares. And now you can imagine with AI help gain this MLS mental health. They can be more productive, be more resilient, happier, and it can lead to human sustainability in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Very passionate yeah. presentation. So sure. Thank you so much for it. First of all, I completely see the need for, for a company like this. There's definitely openness to talk yeah. about mental health. Yeah. And as we all know, right, there's just not enough psychologists to go around. Yeah. So the fact that this allows them to have access 24 hours a day, yeah. there's an absolute need for it. How will you make money from this? We have a subscription base for our daily and monthly. So all of these customers that are paying are the daily customers. So we're working on improving them into either weekly or monthly. How much are you charging the users? 60 cent dollar. So, so it's about 10,000 rupees. Per day. How many paying subscribers do you have right now? We have almost three hundred. Three hundred currently because paying customers. paying customers because we just started the paying customers on mid July. In terms of the investment, where will that go? Most of the uh, investment will go to the tech, especially the development of the nature itself, because we already had like the 2.0 AI for now using uh, GPT-4. But currently, we only have that one engine, which is a bit of a risk. So might as well seek something that is from Europe and America, which is quite expensive. You are building your entire stack on GPT-4. Yes. Exactly. It's good because you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but it can also be bad because GPT-4 is still improving very, very quickly. Yeah. So how do you keep up with something that you cannot really control? And that, by the way, is the core of your product. We understand that risk, but in this stage, it's not efficient for us to build from scratch. So yes, we are currently uh, using the open source, which is the GPT-4, but once we got an investment, some of them will be used to start it, the, the uh, LLM for mental health. To build that large language model, I feel, is going to require a lot of resources. So that is going to be the biggest risk that I see. And to get there, you probably need a few billion dollars. And I'm not seeing that today. So for me, it's going to be a no. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I don't really see the barrier to entry because you're building off an open source. So I'm a little bit unsure of how you're going to get there. Tanang AI just needs one yes to get shortlisted to stage two. With Amit on the fence and Wyman's hard no, their fate depends on Roshni.
Neil Tanang AI secure a place on the shortlist for Stage 2? With Amit unimpressed and a no from Wyman, only a yes from Roshni will get them through. I do echo some of their sentiments. However, I feel that you guys have the sincerity, the desire to make it work. And I believe that when the heart is there and the total addressable market is there and the need is there, we will figure it out. And that's what starting up is all about. On my end, it's a yes. We're going to bring you to the next round of deliberation. Wow, okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, you so much. Much. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. See you soon. <laughs> yeah. Yay! We have one foot in, but we just need to have another foot to get in. <sighs> the judges say that the business model is not going to work and they don't see the projection out of it, but we are the one that knows the market. Ba, hello, Ba. We're still waiting for our turn. We're going to hit in soon. Just be humble. Okay. Best of luck. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye-bye. Yeah. My name is Elvin. My name is Jean. And we are the co-founders of Altaverse, based in Singapore. Altaverse is a spin-off from the family business called YJP. It's been around for over 30 years. What we do is replicate the real world as precise and accurate as possible. Clients can use virtual worlds to engage with their customers with their own real world assets. It's an incredible experience to work together with the brothers to extend the family legacy into a new business line. We all have very different professional careers and it's amazing that we are now coming together to build this business. Let's do our best in this. Right, because it's a startup, we have to bootstrap a lot of things and therefore the Big Spark this is the great platform for us to showcase to the world what we could do and also get the necessary funding to grow the business further. My name is Alvin and uh, I'm the founder and uh, CEO of Alteredverse. Good day, judges. My name is Jean. I'm the co-founder of Alteredverse. I look after HR, finance, mid-office stuff. He looks after products. The stage is yours. All right. Are you ready? Thank you. Yeah. Imagine a single point. Picture it evolving and multiplying, turning not into random shapes, but rather into a mirror of our world. These points, they are called point clouds, and they are collected by governments and engineering firms. What Alteverse does is transform these points into realistic and precise digital worlds. What sets us apart is our ability to combine the technical precision of geospatial mapping with the technology and creativity of the gaming world. This is a $100 billion opportunity. As a B2B startup, Alteverse is making virtual world a practical tool for businesses to use to train, to plan, to market, and to socialize. We are raising $1 million to turn this vision into the reality that we want to build. We're working with brands to digitize their products and create a virtual shopping environment. And we're working with an academy to digitize the entire campus such that it can be used for wayfinding systems or for simulation and training and multiple other use cases as well. We're not just pushing boundaries, we are redefining it. Let's bridge the physical and the digital world. Thank you. Thank you, Alvin. Thank you. How are you going to compete against some of the big players? What separates you from them? There are two key um, domain knowledge that we possess. One is the geospatial domain, and one is the game development domain. It's not easy to have these two sets of domain knowledge within a company. So likely, we would be an acquisition target rather than a competitor. And what about the sales cycle, trying to find clients who are looking for this? Who does the BD? So I do the main BD, and then uh, the other co-founders also will do some BD as well. So I've been traveling to like Bangkok, Vietnam. I just recently came back from Dubai, and we've got a lot of interesting uh, requests on it, and we're following up right now. Mm. For now, there is that one big issue with the revenue model. But seeing beyond that business model, we do have some good proprietary tech behind it. And if we could just tweak that model a little bit, well, I think it might be something that we could work with. Yeah. If your proprietary tech is great, can you not be licensing that to other service providers rather than building a service of it yourself? Perhaps something to consider? Yes, that, that is the plan. Yes. So I guess what that means is, uh, Elvin and Jean, 
you guys are going to be shortlisted for deliberation. Here, yes. on to the next round. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's a good job, right? But let's fine tune a little bit and that's then right. uh, we'll, we'll get better together. Right. Thank you okay. so much. Thank okay. you. Yes. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> Initially, when Wai Moon was mentioning about the weakness, and we thought, okay, this is the end of the road. <laughs> so, we have to work on our business model. Yes, yes, we need to show and demonstrate that this is scalable, the revenue is repeatable. Um, I think these are the things that VCs yeah. are looking for. My name is Sai Krishna. My company's name is Snap Robotics. During childhood, I used to watch cartoons and like there was this particular character wherein uh, it used to absorb the animal powers and like make robots out of it. It generated an interest in me and after my undergrad, I wanted to pursue this particular field. The project actually started as a university research topic wherein we had to develop a technology that was similar to human hands. This is the first time that I'm getting such a big platform to exhibit our product. My biggest dream for Snap Robotics is that we would be the biggest player in the soft gripper industry. And we hope that more companies will be able to automate their processes using our technology. I'm sure you would be familiar with the problem of acute shortage of labor, which is the result of rapidly aging population. This will soon compel the companies to completely automate their setups. But the problem with the currently existing solutions is that they are highly customized for the specific task that they are meant to do. So they are not versatile enough for a very versatile dynamic environment, which makes it expensive for the SMEs to adopt a fully automated solution. So we are here, Snap Robotics, introducing the world's most economical robotic hand. This robotic hand is versatile because it is made from soft materials. So the soft materials allows it to conform to the object size and also change its modality depending on the task, which helps it to grasp squishy items like strawberries, thin items like cookies, and even granular items like pasta, just like how human hands work. The beauty about our technology is that it's so versatile that it can be used in so many dynamic industries, like waste segregation, high mix packaging, urban farming, and even food packaging. Our ask today is 500,000 SGD for 10% stake in our company which would help us to improve the product development and also to conduct the pilots. Hope you will join us in our journey of transforming the grasping automation landscape. Thank you. Is your competitive edge in the arm or the grip itself? Our IP is the gripper itself. It is compatible with any robotic arm. We can just buy the robotic arm and plug it. It will work with it but there are other grippers out there. So how does yours compare to others? Most of the soft grippers, I would say 90% that are there in the world, they are based on a single design that's called new edge design, and that is based on positive pressure. Our gripper is based on vacuum actuation, which makes it more safe and more durable. Another innovation is the flaps that forms a scoop for granular items. The other soft grippers can't do that. And definitely our IP is very strong. We have developed this entire technology with in-house fabrication techniques, so it won't be very straightforward for anyone to reverse engineer it. How much will you be selling the grippers for? The complete automation solution, would uh, we are estimating around 100,000 US dollars, but just the gripper for 1,500 US dollars. It's a very interesting product. Obviously, there's a lot of innovation that's gone behind it. The commercial business model needs probably a little bit more understanding. I felt that your presentation is a little heavy and cluttered. You could do a lot more with doing a demo for us. For me, it's going to be more around fleshing out where you think you could be more competitive as compared to similar products out there. Thank you for your feedback. You're going into the shortlist for the next round of deliberation. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, judges. I'll work on those things. Yeah, I'm very glad. Uh, I mean, <laughs> the judges being convinced about our technology really makes us happy makes our focus even more stronger now because we have experienced professionals believing in our product. I need to sell my product more. It is a really capable product. The judges heard seven pitches today and two startups have been sent home. The remaining five will get another chance for consideration when all the quick pitches have been heard at stage one. 
things are just getting started here at the Big Spark. Which startups will move closer to getting a share of that $1 million funding? Come back next week to find out. I'm Diana Sir, signing off for now. On the next episode of The Big Spark, these 10 startups get their two minutes to make an impression. We are a job matching platform. Digital twins using the most accurate data. We have come up with. Uh, sorry. It feels like you're trying to tackle a lot. The possibility of you getting new clients is going to be very challenging. Which of them will be shortlisted to the deliberation round?